Hi folks, this is an early one. I'm recording this on the Friday. It's for the Saturday. I'm away doing uh, readings today elsewhere in the UK. So I just thought I'd pre-record this. And a number of people have asked me to do a video on unaspected planets. I thought, what a good idea. What happens when a planet in your chart <clears throat> receives no aspects from any other planet? Well, it's wild. Someone said to me, right, I've got an unaspected Mars. In fact, I've got two people with unaspected Marses on my case. One of them's got an unaspected Mars in Scorpio, in the sixth house, and nothing touches it. And it's like they don't feel Mars by transit. They don't feel Mars' influence. And I'm thinking, well, Mars in Scorpio is quite comfortable. Mars in the sixth house is a bit industrious. And if it's not being touched, it's just going to plod away in the background and never say boo to a goose. It's not going to cause any problems. It's just healthy. Another person has Mars unaspected in Aries in the 10th house of Korea. And they are a true loose cannon when it comes to work. They're the type of person who goes and gets a new job and just throws themselves headfirst into it and either gets an injury or gets bored after a couple of weeks. And there's no sense of continuity or consistency in their professional career because they can't find the stability at work with that random Mars in Aries in the 10th house. An unaspected Mars in your chart either really tones down your libido and your physicality or it really creates a kind of random wildness with it. Similarly, an unexpected Venus, rare, but I've got a few. These people just don't have any sense of commonness around value. They don't know what it is that they want because it changes so much over time. Value and worth becomes a random factor. And of course, if you have an unaspected Venus, you have to look at the sign and house. Similarly with Mercury. An unaspected Mercury. If someone has an unaspected Mercury, for example, in Gemini or in the third house, then they're going to be the proverbial um, hamster on a wheel or budgerigar. Whereas you find someone with an unaspected Mercury, say, in Pisces or in the twelfth house, then you're going to find someone who's very reticent about communicating or talking. Unaspected Jupiter. Hey, I've got one of them. My unaspected Jupiter is in Leo in the 11th house of community. So I go wild around community. Sometimes I just don't want friends at all. Other times I'm in the middle of I'm the life and soul of a party. And with Jupiter and Leo, it's big. Um, other people with difficult Ju unaspected Jupiter, I've got a classic Clark with an unaspected Jupiter in Capricorn in the seventh house. And they've got this really antiquated 18th century idea of how relationships should be. And when they go out to, on a date, they dress up and put a suit on and polish their shoes. And it's a very Capricornian way, seventh house way of doing things. It's a little bit Unaspected Jupiter takes you to extremes of plus or minus. And an unaspected Saturn, it's a hard one. There is no sense of regularity around boundaries. Boundaries dissolve with unaspected Saturns. If you have an unaspected Saturn, look at the house that it's in more than the sign and ask yourself, where are your boundaries in the affairs of that house? And you'll find that those boundaries constantly shift like sand in the wind. An unaspected Uranus midheaven, a uh, Uranus Pluto, uh, Net, Pluto or Neptune is, is a bit more common. One in 15, one in 20 people will have this. It's when you get unaspected sun and moons. An unaspected moon, not a void moon, an unaspected moon, where there are no aspects to the moon of any type. It creates a sense of aimlessness in the individual. Their emotions are all over the place. Their feelings are innate. They do not get stimulated by external stimulus. They are only stimulated by internal changes of mood and feeling. And because the moon is unaspected, there will be no pressure, no influence from the outside world. It is someone who is truly alone, not lonely, but alone when it comes to their own emotional input. And an unaspected sun, I've got quite a few, much more common than an unaspected moon or unaspected planet. Why, I don't know. 
But whenever I see an unaspected sun, it's like the person is fundamentally alone. And they can be alone in a room full of people. It's not that they lack identity or uniqueness, it's that they lack a sense of purpose and direction. And they generally drift through life according to the house position of the sun in a relatively aimless way. Getting things done and having a good life, but not finding any main purpose. Unaspected planets. On the one hand, they really give you a degree of personal sanctity, solitude and personal space. On the other hand, they do leave you just a little bit outside the loop. Catch you later.